Hi there. In this video I'll explain how to calculate acceleration, displacement and average velocity from a velocity time graph. Then talk about Newton's laws and how they relate to velocity time graphs. As you can see, velocity is always on the y-axis and time is on the x-axis of a graph. A straight diagonal line going up from left to right represents a constant acceleration. And the steeper the line, the greater the acceleration. A horizontal line represents a constant velocity and a straight diagonal line which goes down from left to right represents a constant deceleration or negative acceleration. If the object had the same decrease in velocity over a shorter time like this, then the deceleration would be greater. I'll add numbers to both axes, then calculate the acceleration for each section of the graph. During the first two seconds, as I said, we have a constant acceleration, which can be calculated using the equation a is equal to v minus u divided by t, where u is the initial velocity, 0 meters per second, v is the final velocity, 2 meters per second, and t is the time taken for the change in velocity, which in this case is 2 seconds. If we substitute those values into the equation, we get an acceleration of 1 meters per second per second for the first 2 seconds. For the second section, initial velocity u is 2 meters per second, as is final velocity v. t is 4 seconds, that's from 2 to 6 seconds on the x-axis. Substituting into the equation, we get an acceleration of 0 meters per second per second for the second section of the graph. For the third section, which is a constant deceleration, initial velocity u is 2 meters per second, and final velocity v is 0 meters per second. Time in this case is 3 seconds. When we substitute these values into the equation, we find that we get an acceleration of negative 0.67 meters per second per second. I'll now go over how to find displacement from a velocity time graph. To do that, we need to find the area under the graph, and we split this area into triangular and rectangular shapes. For the first two seconds, the area under the line is a triangle, so its area is half times the base times the height, which gives us 0.5 times 2 times 2. The next section from 2 to 6 seconds, it's a rectangle, and its area is just the base times the height, which is 4 times 2. The last section is a triangle again, so its area is half times the base times the height, giving us 0 0.5 times 3 times 2. If we add up all three areas, we should get a displacement of 13 metres. This value can then be used to calculate the object's average velocity using this equation. Average velocity v bar is equal to displacement over time. We found that the total displacement was 13 metres and total time was 9 seconds, so average velocity is 13 divided by 9, which is 1.44 metres per second. This is the constant velocity an object would need to travel at in order to cover an equal distance in the same amount of time. Here I've made a slight change to the original graph, so to find the total displacement, you'd now need to split the area under the graph into four sections. A triangle for the first two seconds, a rectangle from two to six seconds, a small triangle under the line for the final three seconds, and finally, a rectangle under that. The total displacement would now be 14.5 meters. Just be careful reading the question because sometimes you're only asked to find the displacement for part of the graph and not the total time as we have here. We're back to the original graph now. Remember that we found the total displacement over the 9 seconds to be 13 metres. Now, you wouldn't be asked to calculate it, but you would need to know that this graph would have a displacement greater than 13 metres, since the area under the line for the first 2 seconds is now greater. This is actually a decreasing acceleration for the first 2 seconds, since the line is getting less steep. This graph would give a displacement less than the original 13 metres it shows an increasing acceleration for the first two seconds as the line gets steeper during this time. Here we have a decreasing deceleration for the last three seconds. Displacement again would be less than 13 metres. And finally, this shows an increasing deceleration during the last three seconds as the line gets increasingly steeper during this time. The displacement would now be greater than 13 metres. To finish off, I'd like to talk about Newton's first and second laws. Imagine the velocity time graph is for a toy car, like this one. During the first two seconds, we have a constant acceleration, 
So it must be that the forces acting in the car are unbalanced. This is an example of Newton's second law. In this case, the engine force is greater than the frictional force. Having calculated the car's acceleration, we could use the equation F is equal to MA to find the unbalanced force acting in the car, as long as we know its mass. For the middle section of the graph, from 2 to 6 seconds, we have a constant velocity, so the forces acting in the car must be balanced, equal in size but opposite in direction. This is an example of Newton's first law. Finally, as the car decelerates in the last 3 seconds, the forces must be unbalanced again, although this time the frictional force is greater than the engine force. Newton's second law again. I'll include a question about this in the examples video, so look out for that. So, that covers the basics of velocity time graphs. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.